Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking into the horrific murder of Paige Doherty. So just my usual disclaimer, everything in this video, pictures, information and content were all compiled using articles from the internet and all information is accurate to my knowledge. Today we will be looking into the case of Paige Doherty, a 15 year old girl who was sadly murdered on the 19th of March 2016. A little background into Paige is that she was born on the 18th of April 2000. She lived at home with her mother Pamela, her stepdad and her three younger siblings. The day before Paige was murdered, the 18th, she stayed at her friend Lauren's house. She did have work on Saturday, she worked as a part-time hairdresser. It was about 12 miles away from where she lived, so she was still able to have a normal sleepover with friends and enjoy herself. So the morning of the 19th of March 2016, Paige woke up early and left Lauren's house. She began walking to the bus stop. It wasn't that far of a walk, it was her normal route because Lauren lived not far from Paige. So she began walking towards the bus stop and because it was so early, it was about eight o'clock in the morning, Paige decided to stop off for breakfast. So near to her bus stop, there were a row of shops. So just normal corner shops and a deli. One of those places was called the Delicious Deli. Paige visited this place the morning of her death to buy a breakfast roll on the way to work. As the day went on, nobody really heard from Paige. Her phone, social media, everything was untouched and her boyfriend Dylan received absolutely no messages from her, no phone calls or anything like that. Her mother Pamela wasn't really concerned that much because of course Paige was a 15 year old girl, she was at work, she didn't really want to bother her and she knew everything would be fine. So she didn't really pay much attention to it at the time, but Dylan for some reason was a lot more worried and he decided to phone the workplace where Paige works so he phoned the hairdressers and found out that she actually didn't show up at all. This is where alarm bells started ringing for everybody, they wanted to know why Paige wasn't at work, where was she? Her mother again, she at first thought that Paige had just forgotten her phone charger which is why they didn't receive any contact but the fact that she never turned up for work was quite alarming to a lot of people and this is when the police were brought in. Friends and family and the police they just started walking the route that Paige would normally walk to work and um, towards the bus stop so it was only a 20 minute bus journey it wasn't that far at all but of course they couldn't determine whether or not Paige had actually got on the bus at this point they didn't know any information they just knew that she hadn't turned up for work and everyone was quite worried so walking on the route to work they then saw the row of shops the same row of shops that Paige visited the morning of her death so the police began to think okay maybe she did go into one of these shops we should probably start questioning these people see if they've got any information they went into one of the shops, um, his name was Ashi Ahmed. Mr. Ahmed said he did see Paige that morning. He knew her, she'd been into his shop a few times, they were friendly. So he saw Paige that morning around 8.15, 8.20. He remembered the particular time just because he had a morning routine. So he knew what he was doing at that time in the morning and he saw Paige going past. He said she seemed fine, nothing really seemed out of the ordinary. However, Paige did not come into his shop that morning. She decided to walk a little bit further up and go into Delicious Deli. So, of course, nobody saw Paige after this, and again, at this point, they still didn't know whether or not Paige had got on the bus. Police began starting a more thorough search, so they decided to try and find some CCTV footage and try and determine which way Paige would have walked after she left Delicious Deli to see if maybe she did actually go to the bus stop. Ahmad was the only person that actually had CCTV that covered the outside. All the other shops had inside CCTV, of course, just to prevent theft and things like that but none of them had the outside footage except for Mr Ahmad so the police decided to take just a little bit of footage from him um, just to see which direction Paige went in they took about I think three to four hours worth of footage and before they were able to check this unfortunately they did discover Paige's body it was discovered on the March 21st 2016 in a wooded area so Paige's body was found about half a mile from the shop, so this indicated to police and to others that she did not get on the bus, because of course if she did, they would have found her closer to her workplace and they didn't. So police knew at this point that she hadn't got on the bus and they needed to start focusing their investigation more towards those shops and that surrounding area, because of course something must have happened to Paige during that time. So they began looking at the CCTV footage a little bit more, they wanted to know what was going on, 
with Paige. Um, so finally, when they did manage to look at the CCTV footage after everything had been processed, they could see that Paige did enter Delicious Deli at around 8.20 that morning. This is consistent with Mr. Ahmed's account of that morning, so police knew that they were on the right track. So they checked through the CCTV, the big block that they had taken from Mr. Ahmed, and they could not find any footage whatsoever of Paige after she entered, nothing of her leaving. And they had taken quite, they'd taken three to four hours. So if you walked into a deli at eight o'clock in the morning, just to buy something simple as a roll, maybe a drink, it would not take you three to four hours to leave. But just to cover the bases, the police decided to go back to Mr. Ahmed and take more footage. They took all of that footage and again, Paige was not on there, nothing. At this point, the police were starting to get concerned. They had not seen Paige leave this deli at all. And this is where things got a little bit strange. So they decided to review all 12 hours of footage that Mr. Armour had provided them with. They looked into it and they started to see some suspicious behavior. So the owner of Delicious Deli, John Latham, could be seen running next door to a shop and then running back to his deli where the shutters were down. So his deli was closed and Paige had not left. This is very suspicious for police. They were wondering what was going on. Why had this man let Paige into his shop and then the shutters were down? Why had he closed the shop after she had entered the property? At this point, the police knew that John had CCTV footage inside the delicious deli and they wanted to, of course, obtain that footage. And John strangely provided it willingly. He was like, here you go, here's the footage. When the police reviewed it, it actually didn't show Paige in the deli at all. They looked through it all and it was like she was never there. So he had clearly edited the footage and had taken Paige out of it. So the police were stalled at this point. They had no idea so what, what to do or what was going on. At the same time, of course, Paige's body was sadly found in a wood, wooded area around half a mile from the shop. So Paige had suffered multiple stab injuries. 43 of those were to her neck and head area and 150 around all over her body. I was looking at an interview with Paige's mother. She believes this figure to be a lot higher. She thinks that this is maybe being downplayed in the media for numerous reasons. And she of course has seen the body and she has said that Paige's neck was nearly half gone. There was a massive gap in the neck where all of those stab wounds had been. And she predicts it to be about around 500 stab wounds all over the body. So looking further into it, it does seem that there were three separate weapons used in this murder. So this was quite a brutal, horrific murder. She was a 15 year old girl. She'd just gone in to buy a breakfast roll and she ended up getting murdered. So apart from a knife, scissors and a screwdriver were also thought to have been used in this horrific murder. The police eventually arrested John. Of course, there was so much overwhelming evidence. He let Paige into his shop and she never left. And of course he's seen carrying bin bags later on that day to try and f um, get rid of things. Of course, it was all of that. Eventually, John was arrested and taken to court. He, at first, just said, no, I didn't do anything. She came in, brought her role and left. I don't know anything. Six months later, however, John eventually did confess to the murder of Paige. He does have his own account of things, which has been widely discredited by both Paige's family and the judge presiding over the case. So John claims that Paige did come in and she asked if she could fill out a form for a job. Paige filled out this form in the back of the deli and when she was writing out the form, some sort of argument ensued with both of them. So it could be to do with her age, something came up so of course there was an argument between the two and John said eventually that he would not be hiring Paige. Paige then retaliated apparently according to John and told him that she would tell people he touched her if she did not in fact hire him. Of course this has been widely discredited. Paige's mother of course denies this because Paige already did have a job. Why would she need to work at the deli? She had a job doing what she loved. It was accessible for her. It was fit around her schedule. There was no reason why she would want to go to this deli. So much so that she would threaten a man that she didn't really know that much with claims of him being a paedophile just to get a job that she didn't really need. So of course this has been widely discredited but this is John's account of things. He said that he was so scared of being branded a paedophile, he just lashed out and murdered Paige. Even if this story was true, it still doesn't make sense. Why would he have murdered someone to be accused of being a paedophile? Because of course you do get 
more harsh sentences for that but this is John's account of things and he hasn't really said much on the case since. Paige's mum Pamela has been trying to get into contact with him, she wants to meet him but of course he has been denying this, he doesn't want to see her. So John was eventually charged and was found guilty of Paige's murder. He was sentenced to 27 years in prison, but after appeal, he had this reduced by four years to 23 years. So he is in prison for 23 years. Thank you for watching today's video. There is a link in the description of Pamela speaking about Paige's death and how it impacted her and just other things regarding the case if you would like to see that it is in the link below. Paige's mum has also started a charity in her name that a link towards that with more information will be in the description as well. Thank you for watching today's video.